2021 marked the most impressive year yet in Andrew Garfield's remarkable career. He made a memorable appearance in Spider-Man No Way Home, which became a phenomenon like no other, one of the biggest smash hit movies of all time, making more than $800 million in the United States and about $2 billion worldwide. He was the male lead in the eyes of Tammy Faye, the drama biopic that won Jessica Chastain her first Oscar for Best Actress at the 94th Academy Awards, and he headlined Lin-Manuel Miranda's terrific musical biopic, Tick, Tick, Boom, which earned Garfield his second Oscar nomination for Best Actor. It was an astonishing year for anyone, and Garfield, who's been climbing the ranks throughout the last decade as one of the finest talents of his generation, really came onto the film and awards season like never before. At 38 years old currently, Andrew Garfield is not exactly overdue for an Academy Award, but his work has been so consistently excellent for a while now, including in films he should have been Oscar nominated for, and yet wasn't, that it seems inevitable his time on the Dolby Theater stage is coming, and soon. But why hasn't he won an Oscar yet? And why were a couple of his finest performances overlooked? In this video, I'm going to talk about Andrew Garfield's amazing career in film and television, and discuss the reasons why he's never to date won that elusive Academy Award. First, let's start at the beginning. Andrew Russell Garfield was born on August 20th, 1983 in Los Angeles to Mother Lynn and Father Richard, and he was raised in Epsom, England. He trained at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama and began his career on stage and in television productions. His breakthrough year was 2007, when he appeared in episodes of Doctor Who, headlined the indie feature Boy A, and appeared opposite Robert Redford in Lions for Lambs. I still remember at the age of 22 seeing a trailer for Lions for Lambs, and it wasn't Redford or Meryl Streep or Tom Cruise who got me into a movie theater on its opening weekend. It was that brief glimpse of a young Andrew Garfield. Woo! I was like, this is one of the most handsome men <laughs> I have ever seen. Lions for Lambs probably meant the most to his career at that time, appearing in a year-end release with such a prestigious ensemble of actors, but his great performance of the year was definitely Boy A, which won Garfield the BAFTA TV Award for Best Actor, Garfield portraying the role of Jack, newly released from serving a prison sentence for a violent crime he committed as a child. What the? You don't know what to say. See, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. This movie played the festival circuit for many months, and I was lucky enough to catch it in the summer of 2008 at the Los Angeles Film Festival. It was not a crowded screening, it was late at night, and yet I'll never forget Andrew Garfield showing up to the Q&A and taking his time for every question asked of him. This was the night I recognized not only his great talent for acting, but also his consideration of his audience, of his fans, of the people like me who would go on to support him at every stage of his thus far extraordinary career. Boy A marked the beginning of greatness. In 2009, Garfield appeared in the Red Riding Trilogy, three superb crime drama films which, like Boy A, also won some BAFTA TV awards, and he had a supporting role in Terry Gilliam's The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, opposite Heath Ledger, in his final screen appearance. You sure? Uh, yes. You no, no, you sure? This is yours? Positive, mate. How can you be sure? I, I just know these things. Now, can I have it back, please? Yeah, all right, then about the experience of working with Ledger, Garfield recently said, When anyone dies, we want the beauty of keeping their memory alive by talking about them, and by repeating stories over and over again. I think especially with someone who died so young. I remember feeling it with Heath. He died in the middle of a film that we were making together, and also, he was just obviously such an incredible artist and a gift to the world. Gilliam's film was kind of slight, to be sure, but I remember at the end of 2009, nearly two years after Ledger's death, how such a gift it was to see him on screen one last time. The biggest year yet for Andrew Garfield was definitely 2010, which saw him give two incredible performances on film, one of which got him really close to his first Oscar nomination. Never Let Me Go came first in September, the underrated science fiction drama about cloning with a screenplay by Alex Garland. Garfield shared the screen with Kira Knightley and Carrie Mulligan, the latter being hot off her first Oscar nomination for an education. Never Let Me Go has tons of quiet tension that slowly sneaks up on you, 
in a scene near the end where Garfield's character Tommy realizes his doomed fate is sealed and he unleashes a horrific scream up to the night sky is a movie moment I have never forgotten. Unfortunately, Never Let Me Go just never made a dent at all during that award season, but Garfield's other movie that fall, The Social Network, absolutely did. One of the best films of 2010, and one of my favorite films of the entire decade, The Social Network is a rare masterpiece where everything came together at just the right time. Aaron Sorkin's astonishing screenplay, David Fincher's precise directing, and a dream of a perfectly chosen cast that includes Jesse Eisenberg as Mark Zuckerberg, Justin Timberlake as Sean Parker, Rooney Mara as Erica Albright, and of course Garfield as Eduardo Saverin, who in the film's best scene discovers he's being squeezed out of the Facebook business and has a few choice words for Mark. Mark! Mark! He's wired in. Sorry? He's wired in. Is he? Yes. How about now? You're still wired in? Some might forget just how close Garfield came to an Oscar nomination for The Social Network in the Best Supporting Actor category. He was nominated at the Golden Globes, Critics' Choice, and BAFTA, and the cast of the film received a nomination for Best Ensemble at SAG. The movie got in at the Oscars for Picture, Director, Screenplay, Actor for Eisenberg. This star-making performance by Garfield should have been recognized as well, but John Hawks, a surprise supporting actor Oscar nominee for Winner's Bone, who didn't show up in any of the major precursor ceremonies, likely took Garfield's place. Not to say that this little hiccup actually hurt Andrew Garfield's career. His next two films, alas, were The Amazing Spider-Man in 2012, and The Amazing Spider-Man 2 in 2014. <laughs> stay with me, stay with me. Stay with me, stay with me. You stay with me. In a way, I think playing Spider-Man gave Garfield the opportunity to pursue the projects he wanted. That goes for his theater credits, like playing Biff in the 2012 Broadway revival of Death of a Salesman, directed by Mike Nichols, which earned him a Tony Award nomination for Best Featured Actor in a Play, and then later portraying Prior Walter in the 2018 Broadway revival of Tony Kushner's Angels in America, which won Garfield the Tony Award for Best Leading Actor in a Play. In the world of film, he followed up the two Spider-Man movies with a series of terrific dramas, starting with the underrated 99 Homes, where he acted opposite Michael Shannon and Laura Dern, and two 2016 epics, one of which finally earned Garfield his first Academy Award nomination. The one that didn't get him nominated was Silence, Martin Scorsese's decades-long passion project that fell by the wayside a bit that award season, the film only earning a single Oscar nomination for Best Cinematography. The nearly three-hour-long historical drama was a hard sell for audiences, one that only rewards the patient viewer. Garfield gives one of his best performances to date as a Jesuit priest in 17th century Japan, opposite other great actors like Adam Driver and Liam Neeson. You're wrong. They worship God. God, our Lord. They praise the name of Deus. That's just another word for a God they never knew. Garfield took his role extremely seriously, taking a year off to cultivate a lot of his head and facial hair growth. He also joined Driver at a Jesuit retreat where he didn't speak for a single week, per the retreat rules, so he could get a feel for the spirituality needed for the role. Scorsese's third religion-based film after The Last Temptation of Christ and Kundin gave Garfield a challenging role that sadly just didn't get a ton of notice at the time, but thankfully he had a second major award season release that year, and his performance in this one did not go ignored. Hacksaw Ridge, directed by Mel Gibson, gave Garfield a lead showy role in an ultra-compelling World War II drama, in which he plays an army medic named Desmond T. Doss, who served during the Battle of Okinawa and refused to kill people, becoming the first man in American history to receive the Medal of Honor without firing a single shot. I got extra guard duty today, and I'm on KP this morning, so... Can't. Unlike Silence, Hacksaw Ridge was more of an approachable movie for both critics and audiences, and the film became a giant hit at the end of 2016, earning $180 million worldwide on a $40 million budget. There is already Oscar talk around this film. Okay. 
How do you take that in your ridiculous sort of British self-effacing way? <laughs> the film was celebrated right from the beginning, and Garfield's excellent performance went along for the ride, earning Best Actor nominations at the Golden Globe Awards, Critics' Choice Awards, Screen Actors Guild Awards, BAFTA Awards, and finally, the Academy Award. Tell me what it's like to be a first timer here. I mean, it's um, it's it's hard to sum up, to be honest, Ryan. I feel very um, very proud to be named alongside these other actors that I admire and feel ins inspired by so much. Garfield did not miss when it came to his nominations. Unfortunately, he also didn't win any major awards either. He won a few things, like Best Actor in an Action Movie at the Critics' Choice Awards, Best Actor at the Satellite Awards and the Spotlight Award at the Palm Springs International Film Festival, but yeah. This was the season of Casey Affleck versus Denzel Washington, and although Hacksaw Ridge did get nominations for Director and Picture and win two Oscars, one for sound mixing and another for film editing, when it came to Best Actor, Garfield this time around was going to have to stay in his seat. He offered strong work at his next three films, even if they were completely ignored come Oscar time, his 2017 drama Breathe, Andy Serkis' directorial debut, in which Garfield plays the real-life Robin Cavendish, struck down by polio at age 28, was the best-liked and most widely seen of his next three movies, but it just wasn't strong enough to stand out in a competitive award season. <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> The performance I'm partial to, even if the movie doesn't fully work, is Garfield's portrayal of the disenchanted and drifting Sam in David Robert Mitchell's surreal drama, Under the Silver Lake. Sam watches a mysterious woman swimming in his apartment pool one night, but the next morning she disappears, which sets off a bizarre mystery tale that's too long, too meandering, but still enormously compelling mostly due to Garfield's committed performance. I heard this, there's some kind of code or like secret message in, in their music. <laughs> Under the Silver Lake was nominated for the Palm d'Or at the 2018 Cannes Film Festival, but the lackluster reception from critics and audiences, not to mention the erratic release schedule, the movie quietly entering a few theaters in April 2019 before quickly going to video on demand, didn't do the film or Garfield any favors. But I'd say if you're a fan of David Lynch's work, I highly recommend Under the Silver Lake as an entertaining little oddity that has by far one of Garfield's best performances. He followed that up with a barely released or marketed 2020 Gia Coppola film called Mainstream, but thankfully that leads us to Andrew Garfield's absolutely glorious 2021, which I believe was the year more than any other that allowed him to shine that gave him a chance to show the world, in three totally different projects, his incredible charm and talent. The first film to talk about is Spider-Man No Way Home, which marked for Garfield a beautiful coda to the work he did on his two amazing Spider-Man movies, allowing him to find closure for his interpretation of the character, while also showcase his gift for comedy, alongside Tom Holland and Tobey Maguire. Who the hell are you? I'm Peter Parker. That's not possible. I am Spider-Man. I will never forget the gigantic roar in my audience when Garfield first takes off the Spidey mask. He is terrific in this film. In an award season of two Garfield dramas, it was such a blast to see him as Spider-Man again in a way that made sense and served the larger story. The second film to discuss is The Eyes of Tammy Faye, which won Jessica Chastain, the figure I discussed in my previous elusive Oscar video, the Academy Award for Best Actress. The movie hit a few stumbles along the way. It wasn't exactly the most adored critically this past award season, and it barely made a dent at the box office when released theatrically in September 2021. But the performances by Chastain and Garfield, not to mention the impressive work with makeup and hairstyling, which also won an Academy Award, made the film a genuine standout. <laughs> well, oh, Tam, would, mm -hmm. would you mind getting me another coat? Jim, let your wife speak. Debate, I think it gets us all back to unity. Oh, I don't want to debate you, Jerry. I love you. I love all of you guys. R R Reverend Falwell. At the end of the day, Chastain as Tammy Faye was the transformative, powerful centerpiece of the movie, making Garfield's performance as her husband, Jim, just not quite as memorable, which likely cost him nominations in the supporting actor category. 
But one other reason Garfield's performance in the eyes of Tammy Faye just wasn't taken as seriously as it should have been? All eyes were simply on yet another three-dimensional Garfield performance at award season, this one in a much better film overall that was ultimately able to secure the actor his second Academy Award nomination. Tick Tick Boom, the astonishing directorial debut of Lin-Manuel Miranda, gave us some of Garfield's finest work yet, portraying the real-life Jonathan Larson, who on the cusp of his 30th birthday is trying to finish and mount the next great American stage musical. The man who would go on to write Rent and die from an aneurysm the night before Rent's first preview, Jonathan Larson is an important figure in theater history who needed a biopic about his life. And Manuel Miranda made a great one, Tick Tick Boom, one of my five favorite films of 2021. Garfield, I think, never better in a movie before than he is here. Whoa, can we just talk for a second? Mm. Can we just talk about how amazing you were tonight? Thank you. I'm not messing around. I could just watch you dancing forever. Showing so many layers and shades of this character, having to sing and dance and be funny and be sad and be so desperately passionate about the art he feels a calling to create, Garfield is, in a word, stunning, and was my vote to win the Oscar for Best Actor. He won the Golden Globe Award for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical, but that ceremony wasn't televised, which didn't allow Garfield to make a speech, and he wasn't nominated for a BAFTA Award either. Still, I think if he had won the Screen Actors Guild Award for Best Actor, Garfield could have had his first legitimate shot at winning an Oscar, but Will Smith won there for King Richard, and then the man just kept on sweeping until the big Oscars night. In addition, King Richard earned six Oscar nominations total, including Best Picture versus Tick Tick Boom, which only got in for two, Best Actor for Garfield and Best Film Editing. As much as I adored this movie, the Academy, for whatever reason, just didn't respond to it well enough to give Garfield the odds he needed to become an Oscar victor. It's crazy, man. Like, when I think about myself as like a 17-year-old drama student and the fact that I'm sitting here talking to you in front of all of you and the fact that I've been nominated for an Oscar twice, and that's insane. I won a Tony Award. Like, it's like... So here we are in 2022. The best year of Garfield's career has come and gone. And despite having received two well-earned Academy Award nominations, which should have been three, his elusive Oscar remains unclaimed. As of this recording, Garfield is only one project completed, a crime drama limited series for FX called Under the Banner of Heaven, which starts airing later this month. The man does have a Tony Award and his Oscar nominations. Maybe his first ever Emmy Award nomination will be coming later this year. Considering all the success he's had of late, I wouldn't bet against it. No matter what happens next, I still think Garfield's first Academy Award win is coming. He just needs one more lead role in the right project with the right timing because he's one of the best actors of his generation, so handsome and charming, so ridiculously talented in everything he does, whether it's for the stage or TV or the movies. Andrew Garfield, my friends, is the real deal. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know in the comments below which Garfield performance you love the best. Do you think he should have won an Oscar by now? See you next time.